Welcome to Business in the Age of Empathy. Today we have two extraordinary guests from The Body Shop. Alice, the global head of activism at The Body Shop, and Akila, business humanizer at Innate Motion and member of The Body Shop Youth Collective Advisory Board. Alice is a passionate advocate for human rights and social justice and has a background in government, nonprofit, and sustainability work. She'll share insights into the Body Shop's collaboration with the United Nations aimed at increasing youth engagement in politics and public decision making. Akila, our second guest, who by the way is an integral part of this podcast, even though this is the first time you hear of her, brings resilience and empathy to the table. With experience in both the tech and beauty industries, she specializes in building brands that positively impact people and communities worldwide. As part of the Body Shop Youth Collective, Akila plays a crucial role in bringing the voices of the youth to the boardroom. So welcome, Alice and Akila, to Business in the Age of Empathy. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, Sean. Hi, Alice. Thanks for having me. It's really cool to be on the other side of this podcast for once. Yeah, that's right, Akila. You're always in the back end, making sure everything goes well, making sure everyone is prepped, and now you can finally shine on a podcast yourself. One of the things that really stuck out to me, Alice, when we were preparing is your role as a global head of activism. I'm sure there's not a lot of global heads of activism in businesses nowadays, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't met any others yet. If there are any listening, please do get in touch because I'd love to have a chat. How has that become a thing at The Body Shop? What's the background of that? There has always been, since very early in The Body Shop's heritage, a campaigning department. Our first campaign was Save the Whales with Greenpeace back in 1986. And my boss, Chris Davis, he's got a hell of a title. It's International Director of Activism, Sustainability, Corporate Comms and Investor Relations, I think. I'm sure he has a full agenda. Yeah, absolutely. But he has been with The Body Shop for almost 20 years. So he worked with Anita Roddick himself. And Anita Roddick being the founder of The Body Shop who started The Body Shop in 1976. And like you said in our first conversation, she realized pretty quickly the power of activism. What triggered that? When we started to have more stores and particularly started to expand around the world a little bit, I think Anita Roddick understood the power that we had in this network of stores with some really great and committed and engaged people in those stores. So it was a really great space to actually have some quite educational conversations about social or environmental justice issues that weren't really being talked about very much at that time. And how was the power of this network leveraged? We have campaigned on all sorts of things over the years. Save the whales, stopping the burning of the rainforests in Brazil in the early 90s, and of course, most famously, the banning of animal testing for cosmetics purposes, but more recently, domestic violence, human trafficking. And I think while all of these topics are really diverse, the one thing that pulls them all together is that they were issues that were not being talked about very much at that time. That's very interesting. I think it will be interesting to go more into that. But first, I'm curious about your involvement with a body shop because obviously you haven't been there from the beginning. So when did your involvement with a body shop begin? <laughs> the first campaign started the year before I was born. So <laughs> no, I been, but uh, yeah, so I joined the body shop four years ago. I actually joined with the sustainability team first. Before the body shop, I had only ever worked in either not-for-profit organizations or in government, mostly mm -hmm. in Australia. My specialty is policy change, particularly the roles of government, but also measuring social impact. There was really nice alignment between the social impact work that I had done, primarily in the Middle East, so Lebanon and Jordan, I lived for quite a long time. And then that lent itself well to sustainability, which then again lends itself well to activism, because how do you know when you've reached the end point? You have to be measuring your change along the way. So how do you know? Ultimately, we strive for policy legislation change. That's the ultimate. That's like the holy grail, which sounds like a lot for a company that primarily sells shampoo, but we've actually changed sex trafficking laws in 22 countries, lobbying. So it is possible. We have done it before. We'll do it again. Set your eyes on the big prize. 
what's the driving force behind a company doing this much policy change work and activism? Where does it come from? The brand has been associated so long with fighting for social and environmental justice. It's really a part of who we are, what sets us apart. I think a lot of other brands have started engaging in brand activism because of public pressure now, especially in recent years. People are more demanding that brands take a position on things. So what would you advise business owners or brands to do to go beyond just taking a position? Start with sustainability because you need to be walking the walk yourself. Definitely make sure that everything that you're doing as an outward expression is being reflected on the inside too. That's really important. But I would say rather than taking positions and using a voice, it's really important to see what your company can do in a context. What is it that you can do to either change your supply chains or do all these things? Because actions definitely speak louder than words. So speaking of actions... You've just launched a new campaign called Be Seen, Be Heard. What was the catalyst for that? When we were thinking about our next big campaign, we were looking at the world, and this was mid-pandemic as well, so late 2020, 2021. And we thought about all of the different issues that we could be lending our voice to, all of the endemic challenges that you have out there, whether it's racism, whether it's social inequality, poverty, gender inequality, you know, there's plenty out there to be working on. But it felt really strange to dedicate ourselves to just one when all of these issues are in some ways or many ways connected. So we wanted to look at how decisions get made and why we keep getting the same results. And we looked at the rooms where decisions get made and particularly politics. And there's a very similar profile around the world. It doesn't matter which country you're in. It tends to be older. It tends to be wealthier tends to be more men. And what's interesting is that young people make up almost half of the world's population, yet they only make up under 3% of politicians around the world. But, you know, if politics is meant to be representative of us, which is how many places are set up, it means that you have an entire generation who are going to inherit the consequences of many decisions being made today, not in the room where those decisions are being made. So in deciding what kind of issues that you could campaign for, you found something that is maybe fundamental to many of those, which is the lack of youth participation, or at least the lack of the youth perspective in politics. And the ultimate goal of body shop activism is to strive for policy changes. So can you tell us what that looks like in practice? This looks really different depending on the country because we work in a lot of different political and cultural contexts in over 75 countries around the world. So in some places, it's lowering the voting age to 16. In other places, it's lowering the age that you can run for office. In some places, it's about getting more young people involved in policy issues that matter to them, particularly climate policy, which is a big area that we're looking at. Or it's just about setting up the leaders of tomorrow today because they're here already. They have fantastic skills. They have fantastic energy. They have fresh views on everything. We look to youth culture for tech, for social innovation, for marketing, for fashion. Why wouldn't we want that energy in politics too? So in essence, the Be Seen, Be Heard campaign is an attempt to bring the youth perspective into the decision-making narrative. And you're not only doing this externally because at the body shop you've already started doing this internally which is why Akila is with us today because Akila is the youth representative in this conversation and she's part of the youth collective of the body shop. Before we talk about what that youth collective is, Akila, can you Explain to us how you got involved. The Body Shop put out a global call for people under the age of 30 working full time for a certified B Corp and that had made a change within their community or had the desire to improve the world. So I applied and went through a series of interviews before getting appointed in May last year. And what was it that made you want to apply to that call? I became really passionate about representation and inclusion, especially in the beauty industry. When I was part of the beauty revolution in South Africa, I saw firsthand the magic that can happen when you give young people a platform. 
and the body shop having such a strong heritage as a B Corp beauty company. And I felt quite drawn to Anita Roddick's very inspiring founding story. I was very excited to take the opportunity and really help bring that youth perspective to such an iconic brand that I grew up with. The Beauty Revolution was a festival, right? It was Africa's largest and boldest beauty festival, but it was also a digital beauty community. So we have over 25,000 youth in Africa that are part of our Beauty Revolution beauty community. And our mission and our purpose was to create a space where all shades and shapes in between could feel really welcome. Thank you for that small sidestep in explaining the beauty revolution. So what would you say is the magic of the youth collective at the body shop? I believe a world where all perspectives are shared and heard is a world where we can really see change. And that's what the youth collective platform in a way is providing. And brands are one of the most powerful tools in mobilizing change. So being able to really share our voices, and they are very diverse. The Youth Collective is this group of humans from all around the world, and we share our unfiltered thoughts and strategies with the body shop. And to really have our voices be heard in this way gives us the opportunity to help make a change on a global scale. And I think more global brands should be following in the footsteps of the body shop and adopting youth advisory boards to really get that youth perspective into the boardroom. What are some things that you give advice on? At the body shop, the sort of topics that we've covered on the youth advisory board range anything from campaigns, so social media campaigns that are active, to more internal strategies in terms of hiring and global rollout strategies that are planned in advance. Okay, so the topics that you give advice on as the youth collective are pretty high level. Uh, Alice, Akila talked about magic. Do you recognize that? Yes, absolutely, I do. We asked the youth collective about Beating Be Heard and their first impressions of it, what they thought of it, and they gave some super constructive feedback, particularly around audiences, but also some creative ideas about how we should be getting out there to the world, including podcasts. Um, <laughs> so um, so they really gave us a lot of food for thought to think about the second year of our campaign, which we've really taken on board, which has been super helpful. So what was the why behind the Youth Collective to start with? You know, through our learnings from Be Seen, Be Heard and about youth participation, we just thought we absolutely need to be embedding this into our company too. Again, yin and yang, walking the walk. We want to be absolutely getting young people's voices from around the business because they're the customers of the future, because they're the leaders of the future. So we need to hear from them today because it's part of future proofing our business. So it it just makes good businesses as well. 100%, yeah. It's uncomfortable. You know, it's not easy to have people challenging your ideas or things that you put a lot of work into, And but it's absolutely necessary. So it's super uncomfortable, but absolutely necessary. Amazing. For you, Akila, if we look at how maybe other companies can implement this kind of work? What do they need to do to involve youth? The first thing is really to be specific with the criteria that you want. So Body Shop is very proud of being a B Corp and they put out a call for specifically people that were working in a B Corp. So we have that understanding of the pillars that are within sustainability and we understand the way the Body Shop model is built coming from other B Corps. So I think being really specific about who you get involved on the board and then really solid briefing. So a lot of us are outside of the body shop and the body shop has a long history and there's a lot of little things to understand. So really briefing people in the correct way so that they have the context of the brief or the business challenge. And then third is just creating a really safe and secure space for people to feel open to share their perspectives. And the body shop is really good at doing that because we start every briefing meeting and board meeting with a meditation. And we come into the space and we all close our eyes and we breathe deeply. And then we come and show up to the meeting more open and ready to actively listen to others and to share our perspectives without judgment of ourselves or others. So I think those are three really good principles. Yeah. Be specific in who you're looking for, give solid briefings, and create a safe space where people can feel open to share their perspectives. 
Anything to add to that, Alice? No, apart from beautifully said, I would say. So what I feel like is happening at this point is a lot of young people feel frustrated. And also it feels weird for me to not include myself in young people anymore. But <laughs> Welcome to the club. We call them former young people. So. Post young people. Rehabilitated yeah. young people. Um, Allies. We, Allies. We had a lot. Because we've extended this cohort of the Youth Collective because it was summer and we like missed a few opportunities to meet. So we've extended it by about six months. And someone was messaging in our meeting on Wednesday night saying, how much longer will we be on this Youth Collective board? Because I'm like not in the youth anymore. <laughs> we were supposed to be ending in May and now I'm like over 30. And <laughs> yeah. So uh, I feel like a lot of young people feel frustrated because they have all these wonderful ideas of how things could be better, how things should be done differently from the way they are done. And in general, it's a pretty long stretch before you can get into a decision-making role. It just takes a lot of time. And it seems like that this Be Seen, Be Heard campaign and the Body Shop Youth Collective can become this ramp where you can accelerate getting into a position of influence. Absolutely. I think we want to be reminding young people that they absolutely have a right to be in the room. It's just that right is not being observed or allowed. There are too many barriers in the way, so we want to dismantle these barriers. But there is nothing stopping from young people pursuing these positions of leadership, whether it be in the community, whether it be in politics, or whether it be in business. And I think the most important thing is just to find allies in the community of all ages who are going to be willing to make space. Yeah, I completely agree. I think nowadays in kind of startup environments and ventures, young people really have the opportunity to have decision-making power. And in organizations that are bigger or in companies that are a little bit more heritage or global, they could adopt strategies like a youth advisory board to really get that youth perspective. But certainly... It's like a yes and a no, because I think youth are speaking up, whether it's directly to companies or brands or in their own way on social media or online. Or with their buying decisions. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think is the role of empathy in all of this, Alice? I think empathy is central to all of this because, to be honest, you can't do business without empathy. You can't do politics without empathy. You can't do campaigning without empathy. In business, it's about being empathetic to your customers and their needs and their values. The ability to put yourself in other people's shoes and understand how they're thinking and how they're working is really important. Super important in politics because you're there to represent your community, right? So you have to be empathetic to the needs of your community. And at the moment, I think we're seeing a breakdown in that empathy between representation and the community. So we need to start bringing that back. In campaigning, you need to be totally empathetic to your adversaries. You have to approach campaigning with kindness. You have to be willing to listen and to hear the other side and what their concerns are and make sure that they feel heard in order to bring them on the journey with you. What is a campaign that you would say where empathy really seems crucial and needed to bring adversaries with you on the journey? We find that particularly lowering the voting age to 16 is a difficult topic for some. And so being able to make sure that we can take the time and really talk people through the rationale, but also try and connect with them on an emotional level and just say, how would it feel if other people were voting for you and you didn't have the opportunity to raise your own voice, but you know, you're know you going to have to live with the consequences of those decisions. So empathy is absolutely central to all of it. Yeah, I agree. At Innate Motion, we say that empathy is walking in another person's shoes. And I think at the body shop, they really had to have a lot of empathy to invite 12 people under the age of 30 to give them advice and share our opinion. Um, and I also think as the youth, we need to have a lot of empathy for companies, brands, organizations that are also trying to do their best. Wonderful. So Alice, how can people get involved with the Be Seen, Be Heard campaign? So I would really encourage people to check out our website, which is beseenbeheardcampaign.com. There's a report there about politics and participation and how young people need to be 
more involved and how it's going to change the world. But this year, we are going to be focusing on quite a lot of petitioning around the world. So I do encourage wherever you are around the world to head to your local body shop store and see if you can sign a petition for a change to get more young people involved in politics. I want to thank you both very much for the interesting conversation and curious to what's going to happen with the Be Seen, Be Heard campaign and the Youth Collective. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We hope that we have inspired you into action for a regenerative future. This is by no means the easy way of doing business, but the way we see it, it is the only way. To join us in creating a more regenerative world, please visit our website on innamemotion.com or follow us on Instagram or LinkedIn. Oh, 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 oh,